Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 227 of the Fans of Power podcast. I'm Nathan Kennedy, and I am joined this week by the masked man himself, the man of mystery, everyone's favorite dumpster diving hobo, Joe Amato. Mr. Amato, how you doing this week? And this, I don't know if that's what you said last week, too. I'm trying to think what you call me when um, I went off screen to, like, fix my hood. And he's like, I don't know what he's worrying about. He already looks like a hobo already. Or you right. said something. I was like, that was a quick one under your breath. Of course, I wasn't around to hear it. But even if I was, I'm sure you still would have said it. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. That's what I'm here for, right? Bastard. <laughs> so, um, yeah. No, we have, like I said, a few topics we'll discuss. And, um I'll, first, before I give a shout out to everybody in the chat room, I want to give a shout out to uh, two fans in particular. There's a new fan. His name is Monte Van Wick, who started listening to our podcast, and you know I connected through him on Facebook. So I just want to say, hey, I'm glad you're enjoying the show, and I'm glad you're a new fan. So we always appreciate the support. And then there's somebody on Facebook that I've known, and I didn't know this person was listening to our show. Maybe it was just a mental lapse because you know how many times I have that. I'll fucking forget what we said last that's, week. That's Oops, very sorry. true. First step. That, yep. That's true. But um, yes. So um, girly girl Anderson, uh, I was saying, hey, you know, I didn't know if you, you know, subscribe and listen to our podcast and everything, you know. And she was like, um, actually, we've been fans for uh, the podcast for a while because it's her and her boyfriend listen to it. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I said, well, I'm glad you've been there for a while and enjoy it. Thank you. And then she said, is there any way we could hear more from Nathan and less from you? That would make the show <laughs> yeah. better. I was like, <laughs> So I was like, I gotta let Nathan know that I, I got the biggest kick out of that. And, 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 I, and who, I'm is, like, who is this again? You said girly girl, girly girl, girly, girly girl Anderson. Well, I I appreciate that you want to hear more from me. Um, <laughs> it's it's a little bit easier to do on the two two man shows because uh, when you know when Tyler's here between him and Joe, it's hard for me to get a word in anyway. But I appreciate that. That's awesome. And I, I want to uh, yeah. thank you guys, too. We are so close. I just checked. We are five subscribers away from 500 subscribers, which is crazy. To For me. us, it's a great feeling. I know, too, you know, big YouTube channels that's like, you know, drop in the bucket. But that means, I mean, yeah. it means a lot. Love that, you know, you guys are always here and it's just growing. It has a continual growth of really passionate fans who love Masters of the Universe. And that's all it's about. So we do appreciate that. And by the way, I did get back right after Girly Girl said that. I said, ah. I said, ha, ah, I have to bring that up on the next episode this Sunday. And then she said, in all seriousness, or seriousness, you guys do an amazing job. Aaron and I both listen to you when we work out. You have so much passion for the brand, and your knowledge is incredible. And then I thanked her. But I told her, yeah, I have to bring that up, how she shot me down and praised up Nathan. I was like, yeah, I'll make this up. <laughs> feels, it feels good, man. It feels good. See? See, so there. There's people for you. I mean, there's always people there for you, Nathan. I always tell you that. Nobody likes me. No, um, <laughs> so let me say hello to who we have here in the chat room so far. JSP, Adam Gabbard, Febmon, Papa Hud, 69, Zentron, Grimbot, or excuse me, Grimbot. God, I couldn't even say your name. God, it's only two words and I couldn't say it. Um, DJ Tags, Aaron Voorhees, and Spiderette. So that's everybody that I've seen so far. So if I missed anybody, I apologize. But anything new, Nathan, before we get to, well, something that's new, but uh, ain't super amazing. Well, I think you can think. I drunkenly last night bought uh, the Palace Guards, the Classics Power uh, Palace Guards, and Snout Spout. So I woke up today and I was like, "Oh yeah, I, I just uh, dropped a hundred and thirty dollars." Oh, all right. Well, anyway, let's. Are move. those pretty? Are, are the Palace Guards pretty expensive? Because it's um, been so long since I've seen them up, I couldn't even remember. On, on eBay, if you're looking at it, buy it now, it's. Uh, you're, it, it depends too because like if you're getting everybody like if you're getting the two palace guards with the other two heads that you can get and all the accessories you're looking at about eighty dollars uh if it's just the figures themselves with a little bit less of the weaponry you're looking probably about 65 70 so it doesn't knock, knock down too much of the price but um, okay yeah it's, and, and the, the frustrating thing is finding some that i want and they're like, people are bidding on them. And I'm like, all right, well, that's that's not bad. We'll see how this turns up towards the end. And then by the time they keep bidding and bidding, it's five, ten dollars off the buy it now price. I'm like, well, that, that's <laughs> that's pointless. But yeah, right, I, right. Uh, once I get in a few more of what I got, I'll I'll take a picture of my collection right here and post it on the Facebook page. Yeah, you gotta page. do that. that and we... eventually have it to where maybe we can see them all in back of you too sometime. Uh, you have to do a special episode. Uh, It'd be hard I... to do, but maybe one time. I'll, uh, yeah, either that or maybe I can just make a video, a really short video and post it on the channel. It's like, here's my collection right now. 
kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to see it. Yeah. Hey, and t- see, now there's something positive. Spiderette says, don't worry, Joe. My daughter thinks you're cool. And I'll say that thanks a lot. So I appreciate it. See, I'm cool to somebody, damn it, Nathan. So then I'll watch my mouth. I won't say anything too bad right now. It's, <laughs> it might happen in a couple minutes because we're going to discuss. We're not going to be able to show because, uh, as you know, last time for issue five, what were we, like two or three pages in? And then we got knocked off. Oh, so we yeah. can't show yeah, this yeah, comic. Not, uh, yeah. We sure can discuss it. Le- lesson learned. But, man, th- this is it. It's it's been months in the making, and to think that we we could have been done with it way sooner had yeah, the like, what, had, had the pandemic not happened. Uh, it would have mm-hmm. been it would have been nice to have gotten this behind us already. Um, but yeah, so huge 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 spoilers is that it? Huge yeah, spoilers. Not yeah. that it's spoiled I, I mean, I mean, this thing is just it's, spoiled anyway. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about it. The spoilers ahead. Uh, if you guys haven't already, go back and check out the other ones and not like joe and i thought that this was gonna drastically change our opinion at the end of it i i feel the same way that i felt this entire time that we've gone through it that it's was ultimately just a a missed opportunity that kind of took something that we've already seen before with the uh the end of the spider-verse movie and it's uh retreading and it just took too damn long. We didn't. It, it, I said it all these other for times. This to be, Could have condensed this right, down into this, like three issues, probably, if that. Yeah, it's just. It, it's like way too much going on. Like the whole big climax is for them to finally arrive to anti attorney You know, this is where the battle is going to happen. But just too much stuff. It's like they just are doing way too many things. I mean, there was no way I think they could have like really pleased anybody. But here's the thing. And again, for those who like that, more power to them. But. I've had a lot of people who said they enjoyed issues one through five, and when they read this issue six, they said, this was just stupid. They said, I don't even know what the hell was going on. And they said, this isn't what I expected to be the ending. So even fans of this comics that I've seen online even hated this. So when it comes to you and I that already from the beginning, we're just like, I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. It's like, okay, just how bad can they make this? And and they do. <laughs> they make it pretty damn bad. Yeah. But you go ahead with some of your thoughts, and we'll get to some of the things. But, uh, eh. Well, I, I'm just kind of flipping through the, the images here uh, to kind of give you guys an idea of what's going on. It's uh, it, it's kind of where you thought the story was going to go. It's going to lead to this big climactic battle. But what's what's weird, and I, I guess if I were to give it some positive, it's I, I'm kind of happy that the, the He-Men that did die have stayed dead. It's not like they it was this grand resurrection. They all come back for one final fight, but kind of what we got instead was just very, um, mind numbing. And I, I'm sitting here too, flipping through this one image to, and it, I, I guess, uh, with anti attorney, he man, essentially wearing Skeletor's God, the, from the movie outfit, I'm like, yeah, because well, when we get to this, yeah, he's using I don't all the know powers. Where, I, I don't know where to start with it, really. Like, uh, that's what I mean. It's it's going to be a lot of jumping around because, as you know, we're we're not going to read the whole thing to you. Just our kind of initial thoughts. But yeah, just yeah, he gets back. He has all the powers, and he's getting all the damn. What the hell were these things even called? Because I started losing. It was like today's spirit. It's all the spirits of Grayskull that he's using when he said, "Let the power return," and then it makes yeah. all these images of them. Of, here in this anti-verse because remember uh castle hell skull it's in anti-attorney is the whole center source of everything i guess and all the power and all the confusion but um so, when i'm looking at the one thing wait i gotta keep it out because i don't want anything to happen i don't want uh, us to get knocked off but what gets me mad is just seeing the thought of how can at one point in this comic keldor c- can get the the best of anti-attorney he-man but nobody else did and like you said the one page where they show when you know like how you said this is how everything could be and you could see all the things in the universe when he's showing uh, whatever's killed or some crap and you see anti-attorney he-man like you said in skeletor's god outfit but then they're showing a panel it's like why is i'm why am i seeing one page with a guy i have no clue who it is fighting it looks like four or five Tila's yeah they're all Tila I'm like I don't I don't understand what that means it's see when you guys are trying to be clever with stuff can you give some context to trying to have it make sense of just saying oh well hey this is just one universe this is one thing that could happen could happen but yeah. it makes no sense did we see a universe where there was like hey there's eight snout spouts you know what I mean I don't right. understand what the hell I, that I, meant I don't know and then on that same panel you know we get we get the music and 
uh, that next page that you flip over. Uh, that I I oh. I immediately when I because I was reading this and messaging Joe. There are characters that come through this portal, and I'm gonna have to zoom in a little bit so I can like get the names right. He he sold Zach, Valiant Tina, Hyra, Platino. Did I did I say that right? Platino. Yeah. And and, and, and he whoa. whoa. He I, whoa! I was like, "What in?" Go ahead. Go ahead. And, I, and I asked Joe. I was like, "Who the fuck are these people?" And to kind of give you guys like a, a, a visual aid in case I well, I can't show you here, but to kind of describe it, we got like uh, what looks to be Battle Cat and and sort of like uh, a human form. Um, <laughs> who who's the the character supposed to be right there, Joe, in the the top right? Like, what is that? That looks like something out of like. A Hanna Barbera cartoon that sort of that actually makes... looks like Squinch. That's supposed to be Squinch, and somehow now Squinch is a He Man. So okay. maybe he is He Woe. Then we have two uh. other new guys as a He Man and two girls as a He Man. But again, you hear the music, and I was thinking, okay, what are they bringing back? Movie He Man or whatever. But here he comes. Yeah. But then you find out it's you know Prince Adam, you know from Filmation. Which nudge nudge. Here comes the Filmation joke shit again. But Man at Arms made the key, fixed the key, and then brought all of them here. But I was like, of course, the main hero up in the front. Has to be that new 52 looking style yeah. of He Man. It's like, oh, of course, DC, let's make him the main character. And then an introduction of one, two, three, four, five, six He Mans that make no sense that we've never even heard of. Yeah. But of course, uh, Pan- you know, we see that Panthor, yes, is uh, Keldor's steed who will eventually become Battle Panthor. I was like, oh, that was creative. It's, you know, Cringer became uh... Battle Cat, but Panthor becomes Battle Panthor. Yeah, it's like. It's... That's some, that's some cool naming. Yeah, so they're but, they're, uh, going, they're going in for the attack, and they think that they've wiped out anti attorney He Man, but it wasn't it wasn't strong enough for for them to do. He kind of blasts them all aside, and then that's that's when uh, uh, it's, it's when it's just what what's painstaking uh, is like you said the amount of things and how, oh wait how did they describe it because I can at least say that because when you did see that oh here came a. Uh, you know, all those new characters and, of course, New 52, who's the savior of the He-Man. And Prince Adam says that uh, Man at Arms made that gravitonic thing to get him there. But then they describe why. What did they say? Then we found him, a He-Man who anti-He-Man couldn't because he spread the power of Grayskull out amongst many. He shared it. I was like, mm. oh, here we go. Everybody's sharing and carrying and, like, and it's all happy and ready. No, there's one He-Man, but no, this new 52 shared it among six people. So anti-attorney He-Man couldn't find him. So and that's they're not, all that's the not even the worst part about this page, because as they're all like the yes sir annoyingly chipper he-man i'm like you guys couldn't like i mean just just break that wall and just call him filmation he-man to just call him annoyingly chipper he-man it's just so well that's what i mean it shows what they really think of this property to think that okay that cartoon was nothing but corniness and jokes and silly which it wasn't go back to rewatch it but in their mind that's how it is so let's constantly mock the character that i've said in the podcast before that made masters of the universe what it was because as much as we love the comics and toys if it wasn't for that cartoon right. he-man would not have been worldwide popular and had the success that it did without that cartoon that they love to mock by the way yeah. but so when we get to the next page when they're showing this big conversation if you guys have the comic and you can look at it one part that just okay here's the thing i know in backgrounds I'm not saying artists have to make the most amazing detailed backgrounds because right. I know sometimes you got to draw something small, but at least some consistency where it's something visible and you can understand. I see Orko, Keltor, Man at Arms, and Panthor in the background, but Orko looks almost like there was no effort, like done. But then when you look at Keldor, his head isn't even finished complete. I look, I was like, there's like a hole, it's a space. I'm like, you didn't even try. You didn't even. I get irritated when even stuff like that can't get any type of respect. It's just, I just, just did not enjoy this. Just like you knew I want again. I know Joe, Joe, you're always angry, but <laughs> damn it, this wasn't the conclusion. Especially when you're going to shoehorn that new Fifty Two as the savior with yeah. all these new characters, and then let's still keep punching down, you know, Filmation He Man because yeah. he's a he's a joke. So while they're but go they're, ahead, then I'll get some more crap. While they're all attacking that, you know, anti attorney He Man's kind of come to his feet. Keldor jumps on the the back of him, and sort of uh, does some some sword trickery, 
raises his sword up into the air and says, by the power of Grayskulls, and now Keldor is essentially like a uh, faker with white streaks I in his hair. So, I want to say something so badly about this, because... Okay, from I kind of fucking forget what happened in issue five and four. I tried to forget right, this whole I, damn yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, it was so long Keldor, ago, too, you know? Yeah, but Keldor has, I think, a half of the power sword. Right. And I didn't know if that's the half from, remember, the early, you know, you know, mini comic He Man, you know, the Alcala style drawn yeah. before that there was a by the power of Grayskull. There were the two halves of the power swords that you put together that gain access to Castle Grayskull. There was no holding by the power of Grayskull, but in this, it looks like he merged his half of that sword with anti attorney He Man's. And it was, I was like, well, how can that work? He, it shouldn't work because that's not a sword that does by the power of Grayskull. But, yeah. anyways, yeah. so when he does that by the power of Grayskulls, by the goddess, he says, I can have the power. And he's a, yes, a blue He Man yeah. with a He Man harness with the Skeletor skull bones or whatever in the middle. It's like, that was your vision of what a Skeletor slash Keldor would become as he. Oh dear God! Can, can we almost end this thing when Battle Panther comes and bites and? But still, even the thought. Oh, he, that's why I said he can overpower him. Like I said, none of the He Man could beat uh, Anti Attorney He Man, but Keldor can at least get a good run and be able to overpower. I was like, this this comic should have never been about him. Shouldn't have been his story with the Anti thing. They could have had a Skeletor or something else. Just have a character that not many He Man fans know about, unless they were into you know MYP. Because yes, we know mention of him in the mini comics, but still never seen him. It was MYP where we understand that blue design and the you know the whole blue skin. It's I wish they would have did something else, but so yeah, we get to the whole thing. They blow up this fucking tentacle creature and slop yep. and shit. And yep. go ahead to your next part and, before and, I. Well, and then it's just all of a sudden, Anti Attorney He Man, the power, and he starts shrinking into basically like if Prince Adam was my size. Kind of thing. <laughs> oh, is that it? This, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so we can get uh, And then his his sword just shatters on the ground, and everyone's standing around, and it's that's. It's basically where we get to. You kind of get like this this ending piece that, that it just felt like something out of a a Marvel movie kind of thing. Which is like, oh well, yeah, we'll se- several everybody. days several days later, and it's like, ha ha ha. We yeah, got those, this and we got those champions, right? Those champions sent to their worlds, and we're like, oh, here's that guy that I've never seen. Oh, there's that girl we've never seen. It looks like they threw in the Crimson Countess. I wonder how Danielle feels about that because I know she loves the character, but yeah. I wonder how she feels about it being a story. And then, oh, of course, here's the dork, you know, <laughs> Tappers of Grayskull one, and yeah, you see that. Oh, it must look like Squinch. Yeah, they built a gold statue, and Squinch was probably he, – he's the He-Man there now. But, of course, here we go. The part where they had to show when they're back with Filmation He-Man, you see in the background, it's all, remember, about happiness and parades. Ha- Happy orco Halloween. You know, it's got to be some kind of Halloween. It says, the king gave annoyingly chipper He-Man back his sword, and he returned home with his friends so they could continue teaching each other lessons all day, every day. It's like, oh. Okay, there, I'm done. It's like yeah. right there. You had to do it, didn't you? That's yeah. what that cartoon is all about. Not a good cartoon and, you know, action, adventure. And, yes, stories and mor- morals like other cartoons had. That's all it meant to them was just morals and happiness. Yeah. Fuck yeah, off. Yeah, well, it's just Go like ahead, uh, on this one page, too. It's like, oh, well, here's here's movie Tila and Man-at-Arms out of nowhere. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yeah. With another He-Man that was like, who? We don't know these He-Men, but no. yes, just a disaster of a... I'm so glad it's over. Yeah. I don't know whoever is going to do another series, but God, please get some people on this I can write. Please, just <laughs> save He-Man. I can't take it no more. Like, I... I don't, I don't know. A part of me was about to say I thought their heart was in the right place, but no. Nah, no. I, I don't know what to say. Like, if, if you guys out there did enjoy this, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you found something out of it. But I, after, it's just like, what, what's the point? Like, when it's done, it's just like, well, why, why did we waste so many months of our lives? Yeah, I mean, really, you this? thought, is this what everybody really was expecting to be the climax? I mean, when you are thinking about the whole anti-verse and all these other characters from all the different versions of He-Man, I mean, you would think about having somebody that we've known 
been the main hero, the one that comes to save the day, or maybe many of them coming together if anti-attorney He-Man was a very big threat. But at least more battles is something we should have seen. I feel like the story definitely should not have been anything about Keldor. I mean, hell, if it was the anti-verse, we could have had Skeletor. Not Keldor, but Skeletor maybe be the good guy, and something happened to where he'd have to team up with the He-Man. Whatever it could have been, but anything but Keldor, and just introducing and shoehorning new characters that we don't care about and don't know. Right. Make it a story that we can at least relate to and say god damn look at that oh man filmation he-man and nyp and you know al Kala skeletor did something together or two of them but something epic to show some true power from some of these characters and give them some respect give all of them respect and treat the property as it should be just not this joke because when you see that that's not them treating it with respect you can see the mockery in it anybody can look at that and see what's going on with the mockery yeah yeah I, I mean I don't I don't have much else to to say about it. I just it's disappointing. Yeah, it, and I'll, I'll, you know what? Before we get to our um, uh, you know, doing the magazine, which would be cool, like you know, going down memory lane and letting people see stuff maybe they didn't see or forgot about. You know, we could hit with some of the people in the chat when we're saying. I mean, uh, like you know, Grimbot saying, "Yeah, get James to write." Uh, Papa Hud says that's a huge sli uh, slap in the face to Filmation's He Man. It's not right. Fedmon said a quick cash grab was the point. DJ yeah. Tags says, have a great show. Guys, he's like, I'm not feeling like watching tonight too much on my mind. Oh, well, I hope you do well, DJ Tags. Hope everything's okay with you. Um, Spider is very disrespectful. Uh, disrespectful. Filmation is the He-Man to pop culture. Carlos, um, Carlos, you know why I don't say your last name? Because I feel like I'm going to butcher it. You're going to have to say it to me on Facebook one time. But Carlos, he said, he killed or was an interesting character visually. He said, that's about all I enjoyed from part six. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, sport of this part. Yeah, I mean, when I saw it, I was I was like, okay, but I have questions, you know? Like, so him turning into that just immediately wipes away, like, half of his face being gone. Like, I feel like you could have worked part of that into it, you know? You're right. I just, I, don't I, I have a hard time reading this stuff and... In... And trying to see any other things going on. Sometimes I'm so enraged. It's like, okay, Zentron asked a question about the comics itself. Said, uh, though, how much did these comics cost in development, printing, and how many of them sold? Well, that, I don't know the insight that would, behind that. But th that would be a good question. I, but I, I know where Joe's going with that. Just where the yes. the sales figures from the first issue to the second was a significant yes. drop off. So significant drop and dropped every single month. I think till issue five where it just stood you know, at a stalemate and with the whole coronavirus and things going around, I don't know what issue six would do if it's worse, but even without that, I think it would continue to drop, but it had a drastic drop. So I doubt this was any cash grab. I mean, well, it, you know, they're speaking of cash grabs up there, but I don't think this comic made them any money. And see, that's what pisses me off is, you know, He-Man's got a very hardcore fan base and it's not like people that collect other comics to, to where even those comics sometimes don't have giant numbers, but yeah. If you're going to continue to keep releasing this stuff and it drops like that, it would show like, you know, DC and you'd think the normal person thinking, God, nobody likes this He-Man. They're right. not buying it. No, we would like to buy it <laughs> if it was good. I, and they would stick around. If you could tell a great story, they'd like to stick around. Yes, I know the first issue is usually a big seller because people just have to buy issue ones of everything. But still, when yeah. it's Masters of the Universe and you know it's that fan base, well, if it's good to them, they're going to eat it up. And not only that, but you got to think like – even if it was good, executives aren't looking at the quality of the book. They're looking at the bottom line. How much did this sell, right? So if the numbers kept going down and down and down, then they're going to be like, all right, well, uh, we tried. This isn't a viable property right now. And then it's like back no. to the start, you know, like it. it, it and look, it's spider Red even said what I just said. Yes, it is. To be fair, there is always a drop from issue one to another. But you'd figure after issue two. That's the staying part, especially when it's, you know, it's like I said, a hardcore, very, you know, passionate fan base. Issue two to six, if it's good, they'll stay through that whole ride. Yes, the issue ones with people wanting to just make money off of it, they're gone. But issue two is the main thing. If you stay at that number, it's great. But if it keeps dropping halves and halves and more, it's showing there's no interest that people are not enjoying that. And, and we like, like you said, we will buy the stuff if you make great stories. But I've seen a lot of people say, nope, I was done. And some people said, Joe, you're still buying that crap? Yeah, I'm still buying the crap because <laughs> yeah. I just want to talk about it. But I mean, with, with Tyler, like, why are you guys even still checking that out every month? And I'm like, ah, got to see it through. I, I think that's the thing. It, and, if you're going to, if, if you're really going to buckle down and be criticizing of something, at least see it through 
all the way or most of the way until you can't anymore. I, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, I just... trust me, if I wasn't doing this on the podcast and if you weren't, oh, yeah. I would have been out at issue one. I no. would have read issue one and be like, okay, done. I'm not reading I no wouldn't. More. I wouldn't have even read it, period, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, if I, I was on not, here, yeah. I wouldn't have even checked it out. Uh, well, but, I definitely yeah. would have. I mean, I I would have bought it, but then I would have been out after issue one. I'd be like, okay, done. Like Peter, you know, on Family Eye, I know you don't like it, that but sucks, when he just yeah. was watching the movies, he said, done. No, shut up. I love Family Eye, Dad. Yeah, I just, so that's it. What, just a, a huge missed opportunity. I, I hope that it was. soon they can get another crack at it and maybe come up with something that's sort of worth everyone's time and, and money because this was not at all. But... I, yeah, I want, the one thing, I, I want, hey, you know, if you want to say I could give some kind of credit, this ain't really giving credit, but um, at least I didn't get that whole earthy vernacular that a lot yeah. of the other series was, and with some but, dams and crap, yeah, and just but, ways they were talking. But for for all of that not being there, that they throw in the the looking, what is it, looking up, He Man, and annoyingly looking chipper, up, looking down, He Man, yeah, yeah, it just nah, fuck that. That's yeah. that's just yeah. that's just. Yeah. Poor, poor writing to me. I, I like if you're gonna do that, just go all out and just break that wall down and call them filmation He Man and Tappers He Man or Mega Constructs He Man, whatever. Exactly. If that's naming it for us, you're right. They might as well. But well, let's go into something that's cool that we. I don't know how many people experienced. I don't know if you did. I know mm. I did. But something that'd be nice if they could do something like this to return. And I know that probably people are like, oh, who wants physical stuff? But <laughs> As we get into talking about this, I'd be all bored having something like this return. Oh yeah, for, and that for sure. But it, it goes back to the whole thing. It's it's in a way it's like print. Print is dead, you know. And I hate that. I hate hearing. I it, hate you know, it but too. You, there's things that you still love to have, because I love holding something and having a physical thing to look yes. at instead of just, oh, let me click on my tablet, let me click on my computer. I, and the thing is, the other reason that I wish they would still continue with stuff like this is. You know, things get altered, and things can get lost. A lot of things in the print that we had from the past, some people can't find. Like, here's a big example even of something of video quality. I still got to look at my tapes and see if, see if I have it. What, um, when they were doing the MYP cartoon, there was this one thing where they did this event with the NBA superstars, and they had them interacting with their favorite childhood cartoon characters. Huh. One of the NBA stars interacted with He-Man, but it wasn't Filmation He-Man. Even though he's referring to him, he was interacting with the MYP He-Man. And I remember, you know, like, you know, wanting to get He-Man and so he's like, no, I have the I have the power. You don't, not you. Right. But I remember I was like, it was so cool. Me and Yuka was trying to find that, and there is no video of this anywhere on the internet. Anywhere, Nathan. I swear we have Googled, we've done searches that you couldn't even imagine. And I'm hoping it's still on one of my VHS I, tapes because I record every I, MYP cartoon. I'm sure that uh Grim 2's probably got something stashed somewhere i bet you he doesn't either this is bizarrely nuts and this is what i mean if video can be erased if things of movies when they go to other like streaming platforms can be altered for that platform this stuff it's very important that's why i still wish they would if there was a way they could bring back a he-man magazine just for the hardcore passionate fans somebody that wants a physical poster that can have fun with the kids you know you can have uh, your kids playing and doing puzzles i I mean which we'll get into yeah which, which we will and i yeah that's it's so it, that goes in line with so many other things that just video stores uh uh shit uh like hand painted crafted movie posters that actually like you see the poster and you're like I want to see that movie not just like floating heads and things cuz movie posters are just very uninspiring now there's so many of these classic things that we grew up with and kids will will never know. Maybe they wouldn't even care if if they did. But um, yeah, we're going to talk about the first issue of He Man and the Master of the Universe magazine. This is the premiere issue from the winter of 1985. So was, I mean, obviously, was this something that you were somewhat aware of, or you just walked in the store one day and there it was on the on the shelf, and you're just like, oh, holy While shit, there's a magazine. Were at- well, I was going to say, while these were at the stores, I didn't get issue one at the store or in the mail. I was at a friend's house, 
And I remember he had that. I was losing my shit. I was like, where'd you get it? Where'd you get it? And he was like, I got a store. And there's a thing where you subscribe to it. But he oh. didn't subscribe. I gave me the subscription yeah. card so I could. And he gave me his magazine. So that's how I started getting this. Man. I would have never known. I I mean, of course, eventually going to the store one yeah. time, you know how it would be. It's almost like video game magazines. I would have probably seen the third issue. Because these came out, you know, they were seasonal. So it was yeah. like every three months they came out. And but by, what a treat. I was going to say, by the time that we, we go from like the middle of this hitting its peak in popularity to it dwindling down, there's only what? In the United States, there's only 16 issues of the magazine. I would probably have to look that up again. But I thought there were way more than that. And I didn't know that they came out every three months. So that's... and. I you know what's cool about it? And it reminds me of video game magazines. I don't know if any of you guys in the chat room can relate either. I I remember when I would expect a magazine to come. Like when this would come every three months or a video game magazine every month, like Electron Gaming Monthly. I remember I would hear the mail come to the door and I'd take my curtain. And I would do this slow little peeking because I know my mailbox. And if it was ever sticking up, it meant there was something really big. And they're usually like the little bills. They would go right down yeah. and stick it up. He goes, shit. That's the magazine. I remember losing my mind anytime I get a He-Man magazine. I love just ripping that sucker open and just escaping it to this world. It was so goddamn cool. I mean, the cover just – first, that's what sucks you in. If anybody could capture and bring you in, I mean, it was the beautiful artwork of Earl Norm. Like, right. God damn. Every time you've seen something, it's, it's, it felt powerful. I mean, what a way to introduce He-Man in a magazine form with that image right there. That says it all. Right in front of Grayskull yeah. with that power. And damn. I just – it's cool that you have memories of this magazine as a kid because I I didn't. By the time I was sort of old enough, magazine was long gone. I'm catching like the reruns and finding the figures at flea markets and, you know, uh, discounted on the shelves in the department stores. So I, I missed out on the craze of this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and because this is the entire magazine. I, we're not skimming over like we're not leaving anything out so here on this first we'll page let you guys experience like i said if you never did you know you get yeah. to experience it with us so right here we have marvel superheroes secret wars and um i i had a handful of these figures but it was also once again in the same vein as finding the masters figures either discounted on the shelf at flea markets etc i actually have this dr doom that's on this page oh yeah um and we're not going to sit here and like read everything on these other side pages, but I no. I, I know that some might go quick. Like yeah, I, I know I that, had none of this stuff. This I know that War. Secret Wars was like a huge comic book arc for its time right now, so it's kind of cool to see that advertised. We'll flip to the next page. A letter from He Man. <laughs> Hello to all my friends, and here it is: the first issue of my He Man and the Masters of the Universe magazine, and it's just for you. It's filled with adventures about all of your favorite warriors and their battle for Eternia. Inside, there are puzzles and games populated by the most powerful forces ever. I, I, I won't keep reading all that because that, that is quite a bit to read. But, but how cool is it? You know what? As a kid, I mean, just to let you know, I mean, yes, it's a cartoon. And yes, that's just a picture. But it really felt it was like from He-Man. You know, you mm. really believe that shit. It was like when you went to stores and you would see them walking around in outfits as clunky as they looked. It's like, it's He-Man. It's Skeletor. It's like, but you felt like he's really writing to you. Well, and you know that you could write in with your yeah, stuff. It, well, yeah, yeah, and we'll get to that because people actually wrote, kids wrote letters to He-Man. I'm sure Joe did. I'm sure some of you guys in the chat room did. None of mine got published. Oh, none got How published. How awesome would that have been, in. though, if it like did? But it, it's, oh, lo yeah, I would have lost it. It's interesting to me that that's that's He Man's signature. You know, I figured he'd go for something a little bit like a <laughs> cursive, maybe a little scribbly. Yeah, maybe he didn't know. You know, he didn't learn cursive. It's possible. Yeah. So and, he's just he does everything in capital letters, like he's yelling at you. And I appreciate the note to the adult to remove the posters, open the magazine to the center, take any flat object like a letter opener, and slip it under the staples to unbend them. This allows you to pull out the three posters once they are removed. Bend the staples back, and the rest of the magazine will stay together. Did you ever have any problems getting the posters out? I never have had fingernails, so I used to take my fingers, and when I tried, I was oh. always it felt like it was open oh. to bleed. So I always oh. had to get my mom with her fingernails. Oh, yeah. Joe, yeah, because I, I can imagine that feeling of like that that staple just going under your fingernail. Oh, no, I would yeah, always. It, it, it would hurt. I would always. Uh, my dad had like a really tiny pocket knife. So in any of the magazines that I had that had posters in them, I would borrow his little mini pocket knife and remove them appropriately. But that that's cool that they put that in there. Yeah. 
Yeah, the thing with the posters is, uh, I mean, I hung every one of mine up, so they all, you know, once I finally decided to take them down, you know, all had tape damage on uh, the corners. Some, I think, I know, and I hate it, some I think I still left in the magazines, but the thing is you forgot about the comics then, because as you'll see, they had comic stories in these, which were on the posters. I was like, yeah. damn, I wish they could have put those on some of the nonsense pages. Yeah. So, you know. Because a lot of people forgot there were stories in these yeah. books. And real quick, Zentron mentioned said he sent in one for a game review to a game magazine and happily got published. So that's cool. So did I, Zentron. Not that I'm like an egomaniac, but mm. yeah, I had some oh, yeah. published too. Oh, yeah. Bro, wow. so. no, Joe, Joe's a very uh, humble. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. I was trying to think of the word. Uh, on the next page here, choose your own adventure books, which I always thought these were awesome. That, that was, like, one of my main go-tos at, like, the little book fairs you'd have at elementary school. I'm like, choose your adventures yep, the way to I go. Got the Dungeons, yep, I got the Dungeons & Dragons one. I'm not going to try to look in back of me because I think I had a couple in back of me, but I'm not going to do that and knock something over. Hello, yeah. Eric Sanchez. I actually think I do. Yeah, I. and, and the covers of these things, it, it, it's much like the, the VHS tapes. Back then, and I guess still now when it comes to books, if you guys – still go and get physical books you're reading the back and you're looking at the cover that the cover is the thing that draws you to it you read the back that's when you kind of decide if you want to make your purchase and i, I love choose your own adventure you books. in a sleeve because mine it was like a four pack at four dungeons and dragons books into like almost like a vhs kind no. of sleeve and you'd pull them out and put them no in. Oh. no no most of the choose your own adventure books i got were just like paperback books nothing was like in a together or in in a case or anything so um yeah just uh simpler times i imagine that they probably still make choose your own adventure books i would like to think that they do which we're gonna have to do the one we're gonna have to do the memory stone you and i one of these times and that's the one of the ladybird books from the uk okay. that is a choose your own adventure actually Masters of the Universe. That, kind of... that that would be a lot of fun i, I would have to figure yeah, it out you could do it live yeah, I would have to do it live, and, yeah. you know, like if you – because there's a lot of pages yeah. to scan, but I would like read it and tell you which did you want to choose. I almost wonder should you – well, yeah, hmm. you'd have to because well, we'll, that's we'll, the thing. You'd be seeing the pages. But. Well, we'll figure out the logistics and, and make yeah, that we'll happen. we'll figure out something. Yeah. I mean I think as long as they have the page numbers at the bottom, I don't have to like read it. I can just group them – find a way to group them together, find the pages because I know at the bottom it's like, well – Turn to this page and this page, and then I, I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll, so fi we'll figure that yeah. out because that would be kind of fun to do. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. The next page the next is one. is our content. So it, it's saying here in every issue, you get a letter from He Man, the, the He Man mailbox, Orco Earth Report, which I thought was hilarious in this, Planetary Puzzler, and the answers, and then our features, which we have amazing. He man, so it's going to be a little maze, and and I'm sorry in advance, guys. Maybe next time I'll try to figure it out to where it, like I can have paint open and have the window here, and I'll start to draw, and we'll find our way out of the maze. I didn't want to do it this time, but <laughs> I'll work on it to where maybe we can start to like do the little games that are inside of here. Uh, and they pretty much keep close to the context of this for every issue with slight things of ways. You'll see there's ways they call something different and variants of stuff. But, I mean, at least you're usually always getting the posters, always getting the cool little comic stories and but and news. Yeah. Mm, excuse me. But <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the next page. I, was, I told Nathan, I said, I had to get water because I'm hot as hell, you know. And I, I, I hope sip uh, it, did, I did like, you at least get more than one bottle of water. Like, nah, I figured as much. So here's what Joe was talking about. We had the subscriber card, which I thought it was interesting. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see this a lot in other, other magazines that I would buy in the store, but it actually has the option down here that you, you want to order one for your friend as well. And four issues for only $6, that's a pretty good deal. Man, that's a, that's that a really cool. Good you know, uh, yeah, some of them then started putting like an insert card to take out instead of, you know, cutting out a page or something like that. They had like just a, a card itself, you know what I mean? Single instead yeah. of a whole page like that. Yeah, show, so, so I, I guess. My buddy was cool. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm kind of, Joe, you actually had the physical magazine in front of you, right? Yeah, it's down here. And like I said, it's, it's, a, it's rough. Because, you know, he kind of took care of things a little rougher. And like I said, I kind of destroyed everything. Well, well and I didn't destroy the or the well this page that has the subscription thing that you clip out what what would you be clipping into on there was it the page you just clip into well i the whole page is gone but oh, you would okay. just it was 
Yeah, I think the other side was the one that had the the letter section that you were showing. So I haven't seen that in a while. That that where it said volume one, and the contents and right. everything. That's not in mine because that whole page is gone because right, it would so have been that, cut out. Uh, yeah, that's what that was cutting into then. I guess I could have yeah. thought of it logistically and be like, yeah, that's that's what it's. That's why I think they started putting the cardboard insert or excuse me insert because yeah. they knew man people. Yeah. wrecking their magazine and who wants to do that after I already fucked up all the poster corners and pages so yeah, yeah that's so here, Go ahead. Here, we, here we have the amazing He-Man He-Man is caught in a maze of evil warriors find the path that leads him out of this dangerous situation without touching or crossing a warrior or weapon begin in the middle I was stupid as a kid. I, I really <laughs> fucked mine up here. I don't even know what was going oh, on. Well, I think I wait, really? You, all right, we'll show that to the camera. We want to. We got to see you. Oh yeah. I don't know. I think I really screwed up. Where? <laughs> well, I think right here is one spot where I was like, I didn't know where to go. But yeah, I think this was the cluster crap right there. I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know if I messed it up or tried to cheat, but. I mean, I was cheating. And, and, my, and, and mind you, Joe was 14 years old at the time that this magazine came oh, out. You think I was not. It's like, it's like, he's an idiot kid. How old are you? I was 14. Like, you were <laughs> one dumb fucker. <laughs> but I, um, Hold on, when you get... Well, why, I, here's a question. Why is Evil Lynn green? How did that get through? Oh, God. I don't, like, everybody, I don't know, every, everybody was else just... looks all right, but Evil Lynn is green. Yeah, maybe just a coloring error from the artist. Everybody depicts something different. Uh, Adrian Gonzalez did the uh, the art, and it was colored by Cheryl Chalmers. So, I don't know. Cheryl maybe just felt like making her green. I don't know. Maybe it, I, I have no clue. Right. I don't know that one. I'm going to read every single one of these. This I wish I could find some of these people, but I love yeah, that crazy art. It's crazy oh, as How awesome look, would that be? Like, you know you if we could find them and bring them on the podcast and just be like, hey, tell us your memory yeah. of writing this letter and blah, blah, blah. This comes from Scott Dennis, the Colony of Texas. I watch you on TV every day. I have a lot of He-Man stuff and the castle. He-Man and Skeletor went on vacation with me. Here's my picture of a sand creature. And I'm starting to think, <laughs> because when you look at this art, a lot of it looks the same. So part of me wonders like, just how legit was this um well i think they were i mean I, I drew horribly and i'm not saying these kids drew horribly but uh if some improved as you went into the next years i'm not like i said i'm not crapping on these kids because heck half of them that were drawing it sometimes were six seven years old remember they were really young when they oh, were doing this this is pretty much how most kids did it but i know i'm gonna get grimbot saying well actually when i was seven years old i drew like i was picasso so he'll give us some proper way <laughs> but uh right. yeah, that was yeah, but I mean, really, that's about the basic stuff. When you're six, seven, you're going to be drawing it just like this. Not many ages were set here, but I know as the magazines went on, they, they usually actually put, put the, the ages, ages, I thought. like, Yeah, okay. I thought they did, or they would say, I'm seven years old. So, nah, but I th my, my favorite one I, out of the bunch is from Stephanie Marie from Fort Worth. You are cute. Tila is nice. I don't like Skeletor. He-Man, I wish I could meet you sometime. That's very cute. Yeah, yeah that's cool. And I, I guess but, this poses a question to me because uh, Randall William from Boston says, "I'm excited about the first issue of your magazine. I watch He-Man: The Master Universe every day with my with my friends. I almost said with my kids, Andy and Kenny. One day I will be as strong as He-Man. So was this a thing that was ever advertised at all on TV? You know, let me say something about that. That's what I don't get. That's at least the one." lapse of the memory from when i was a kid because i remember not only this but a lot of times when there was a first issue of something i was like how did i know i mean i don't know which time i was like hey you know i'm excited about the first issue i was like but how did you know there was a how did you right. know this thing was being made yeah i didn't remember them talking about it just like i don't remember them talking about a lot of other magazines but i remember seeing a lot of kids writing in for comics and magazines well like yeah. in comics they would sometimes show the stuff at the back end of a comic and they said i love this first issue or i'm gonna love the first issue hmm. i'm like but how did you know well if, if there, that's always weird to me if there wasn't a commercial maybe there was an advertisement for it in another like parent magazine you know under the same publishing maybe. house it's they like coming soon he man the master universe magazine you then put an address right to he-man kind of thing or something uh, yeah that one uh agreed yeah. i i don't i but i don't know i really don't I, I hope we're not boring people to death while i sit here and read all these jeff posman dear he-man i have a he-man lunchbox i take the bus to school every day but if i were on eternia <laughs> i would take road ripper it would be faster <laughs> 
that would be quick. At least I didn't pick a uh, Dragon Walker. Of course, I don't even know if it was out by this time. I'm trying to remember my time lapse and everything. But uh, yeah, at least the Road Ripper would be quick. Yeah, I think they did have Dragon Walker at this time. Maybe. See, there went my lapse of memory again as a kid. Let me do one. Let me do Mark Wasserman. Okay. Said, dear He Man, He Man and the Masters of the Universe is my favorite program. I watch it every day. I love He Man, Man at Arms, and Oracle. One day I hope to visit the palace. That kid <laughs> sounded a little too intelligent to be speaking like that. It's his favorite program. It's like, yeah. that's my favorite cartoon or TV show. And Danny Conway just, bam, drew a picture of He-Man. And Benny Fuentefria, or Freya. I'm Which, sorry, you Benny. know what? That, that, um, that's not a bad drawing of Castle Grayskull. If they're, if they're like, you know, five, six years old, that's not bad. Sure, you hit hit um two of these and let me have one on this page. All right, uh, I'll, I'll go I'll go with Brian Benting, he, dear He Man. I really like you. If I lived in Eternia, I'd like to help you fight for justice. I'll be looking in store for the magazine, like uh, huh. That, so that, <laughs> that so there had to, there had to have been something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Who, yeah, who yeah, was yeah. it? Febmon said the the publisher was also doing the Muppets magazine as well. So maybe there was an advert. I feel like there was just an advertisement in there, there had, that yeah. this is coming out. There so. must have been. All right. And, and could you read the one that looks like Stratos? Because I always thought it was Stratos and I didn't like it. So oh, read no, the one with the picture of Stratos and I'll read the other. No, that's that's the one that I read. Oh, you did? Oh, good. No wonder I didn't like it. All right. <laughs> oh, dear. He, what, yeah, yeah, what, what, what is, wait, what is that supposed to be? That looks like a vehicle. <laughs> oh my god! As a kid, I always thought it was like a weird Stratos thing. Well, um, no, because you, the can, you can Rider? see like the laser bullets coming out from the the top. I of guess it. it's the Wind Raider, just in a different color. Um, maybe could be. Uh, yeah, it's, I'd like to say it's a different colored Wind Raider. Maybe it's a, a mashup between Red Raider and Stratos. Um, oh, well, let's get Beth Nornick. Uh, dear He Man, here's my suggestion for the for the He Man and the Master Universe magazine. I would like to see lots of mazes because they are my favorite kind of puzzles. Well, Thank you. You know, it's weird. It's not what well, Grimbot Beth, said. Grimbot was. You're in luck because there was a maze two pages ago. Well, yeah, and not only that, first Grimbot said maybe there were relatives that worked on it, but I just forgot how they're talking like this. It almost makes you wonder. You know when they had those like little uh, test markets with kids, yeah. and they're like, what do you like about He-Man? What would you like in a comic or a magazine? I bet you it could have been something like that because that was too specific, too. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, did, did you want well, me to read? You want me to read the one from from Doug, or are you going to read that one? Yeah, read the last one, and then the Oracle one. We won't read everything on or, or, uh, the Earth Report, but when we get to it, we'll at least yeah. cover it. But go ahead. You meet funny creatures. They battle you, but you always win. I hope you have lots of stories to read in He Man and the Master Universe magazine. Okay. Yeah, this was a big promotion thing. Like, hey, get the magazine. This is a great magazine. What would you like in the magazine? So, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it definitely, the context changes when you get to the next issue. But Orco's I Earth actually Report. Looked the, it ortho, or Orco's, I said uh, Ortho. Orthos. Orco's. Yeah, Orco's Earth Report. I liked it when you didn't know about all the stuff that could be coming as for, you know, new TV shows or something. For me, that was kind of cool. Sometimes it would spotlight things that you already knew about, but... It was kind of cool finding out about, you know, the next cartoon or a new, t- like, that Ewok adventure. I don't uh, even know if I ever watched it. it just, for me, uh, it looked weird. Yeah, no. What, what did you see that? Because I don't know what I, the I, hell. No, I didn't, but I know that that is one of the part of the Star Wars TV stuff that people are just like, no. Between that and the Christmas special, they're just like, nah, no. I, and, and then the head Lawrence from Give Me a Break. I mean, who yeah, didn't love man. Give Me a Break? I, well, that was I, a, I mean, think about this. Like, where his career was going to go going from blossom to brotherly love. And then now he does all those Hallmark movies with Melissa Joan Hart. But I like the fact that oh, does the <laughs> Joey loves chocolate chip cookies, Mr. T and he man in the masters of the universe. I'm like, oh, my, right on, <laughs> right on. No, that is cool. That is cool. I, uh, the one on the next page, when they talked about the, I said he man of the issue where you could try to be like the main person. And that David bought talked about, he saved his brother from a uh, lion's what was that, path. A Here, I was like, Jesus. I, I, I'm just, I'm just gonna read it. And before on the other page, I hate to admit it, but I've never watched Starman with Jeff Bridges, so it, I don't know if that's a good or bad. I haven't really looked it's into. It's, it's a good movie. It's, it's, right. it's not gonna make you do yeah, flips, I, but it's, uh, it's good. All right. So, Courage and the Cougar, David Vaughn 
is the issue's first heroic He-Man. During a hiking trip in Big Bend National Park in Texas, David was walking along a trail when he saw a cougar heading toward his four-year-old brother, Justin. David quickly pushed Justin out of the lion's path. If it got him, it would have killed him, David said. This act of bravery proves that David has He-Man power and virtue. So, uh, I have, yeah, wait, I have questions. Where, where are the parents? Me too. First, I had a lot. Even as a kid, I say, "Ugh, fuckers, lying." And now that I read, I'm like, "Yeah, a little fuckers lying." There's no <laughs> way. And they said you could be the next man, but like, which is it, David? Is it a cougar or is it a lion? Right. Which one? I don't know what you're talking about. What is it? And it's like, ah, I'm sure you did. Like, I'm gonna push my brother out of the way, he man. And what did he punch the fucking cougar? <laughs> no, in the I was face? gonna say, like, away? if you pushed him oh, out of the boy. way, then it probably just would have eaten you. Like, where are the parents? <laughs> yeah, What's he... going on here? This story makes no <laughs> yeah, sense. Wait, dude, he pushes brother. Did he push his brother off a cliff? I mean, how did he save him? Oh, just shove him down. Like, oh, the lion's like, oh, not going to touch him now. I call bullshit on that story there, David <laughs> right? Vaught. And I tried always getting this thing by doing and saying uh, something really cool and never made it because I'm yeah. a liar. But, hey, you know, if, if you want to tell Orko about your accomplishments at school, playing sports, or anywhere, write to Orko at Tell the Pictures Publications, Inc., 300 Madison Avenue, New York, New York, 10017. I kind of wonder... I kind of wonder, like, I'm gonna find them. what that is now. I should, like, look that up on Google Maps and just see. You should, it. and while you do that, I'm going to try to find David Vaught on Facebook. I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? We you, talked about you. You're just, you're just going to go down the line of all the, the uh, results, and you're just going to message oh, each one oh, of them. and like, hey, are you the one that pushed your brother out of the way of that lion? You're, you're, you're <laughs> lying. You know what? You're lying. <laughs> And he'd be you're, like, you're a lion. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, come on the podcast, but it's all in innocent fun, you know, but right. yeah, he's a lion fucker, I, I, gonna, but he's a good guy. I'm, sure. I'm going to look that up right now. Uh, we got the calendars, hang a robot on your wall. Okay. That seems very, and look at that. The, the calendar is six ninety five just for the calendar when it's like, Hey, for six bucks, you can, you can get a subscription to the magazine. Some of those, I mean, like when I would see things like that, it did no interest for me. I mean, I know it's a way of just trying to promote and advertise other stuff, but it sounds like, oh, yippee. It's like, I don't want that shitty thing when I seen it. It just didn't look interesting to me. Or about, hey, the book's on dinosaurs. Even though I like dinosaurs, I was like, I never cared about none of that. It was like, I was always targeting mostly on He-Man stuff. And yeah, if there was a main celebrity and something cool, sure. But yeah, those kind of things, I don't know. Never did nothing for me. Um, From what I'm gathering here, it's not too far off from the Empire State Building. It's like uh, oh, yeah. well, it's a it's a few blocks, judging from here. But uh, uh, if if this is appropriate, uh, it's a skyscraper center, so uh, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, companies involved now, it's more of uh, architect and design and engineering and stuff like that. So I guess, okay. or maybe that was the companies involved in building it, not necessarily what is inside of it. So yeah. I don't know. It'd be kind of funny. Right. It'd be kind of funny to write a just, just put that in like Orco Telepictures Publications and just send it on its way and it gets the address somehow. It's like you always uh, wonder, don't you? You always wonder what yeah. would happen with these like defunct yeah, yeah. addresses or something, right? Uh, the next page well, here. We can... Oh yeah, go ahead, go Joe. Well, is the next page? Uh, it should be the maddening of the mound stones, correct? Yes. Yeah, and I didn't now. Uh, I didn't go through and, and read all of this. I just kind of looked at the, the artwork. So you'll probably. Well, Skeletor is just basically, I mean, the gist of the story is he's using his magic to create these monsters to bust into Castle Grayskull. They're causing earthquakes. He Man hears of it, uses, you know, the Road Ripper to get there, destroy them, trap Skeletor within some of these monsters, you know, himself, and basically save the day. But you know what's funny is this is the first comic obviously we're interested you know uh introduced to for these uh magazine stories and it was always my least favorite and it's not anything against the artist but the way it was like when i was a kid the coloring like it, it like messed with my eyes it looked like everything just meshed together and then you're seeing words like oh i'm supposed to read this part like you know yeah. the part that's over there above skeletor's head i was like what the hell's the order? As a kid, you're kind of used to a certain kind of layout of a comic or right. a storybook. And this just, I was like, oh, I didn't know I'm supposed to read there. I missed it because yeah. these colors bled everywhere. Do you see what I mean? Or no, is it yeah, sound yeah. weird? But Yeah, well, I mean, it's like at the top you have the yellow and orange. And then down here, like you got some text in blue and it just, it doesn't stick <sighs> out. Like they, they have the one little like word bubble 
over here in the bottom right, uh, they should have yeah. just done that with all of it somehow or made it to where it's... Yeah, because it, it, that's why I kind of just didn't read it because I'm like, I'll just look at the art. It'll be See? fine. See? Good. Well, I'm not there. And it wasn't me being like mean to anything. You just said it, though. It just... You kind of are not invited to want to read that. Even Grimm said, yeah, it looks, it's ugly looking. And it's not being mean. It's just, yeah. it's like, I'm not really enjoying to want to read this. And then when you flip to the next two pages, when you see, it's more of all this colors that bleed, these mo rock monsters. It just, everything just looks the same. You know what I mean? It seems like every page looks the same. And I was like, I want this to be over. And thank God that when the comic started, you know, getting further into it within the next, you know, the following issues to come, they got much more uh, pleasing to the eyes and a better format. Yeah. For the most part. Cause it, it, like you said, it, it just looks like a bunch of blobs on paper where it all just blends together, but still separates. Us. It's just a mess. But, you know, yeah, like everybody, like Papa Hudson and Fed Mon are both saying it kind of looks like the thing, you know, because it does. It's yeah. just like a mess. But you can just flip through those next pages quick, well, quick, I, and then we'll get. I, well, the you know, I'm on, I'm on this page here, and you look, it's like, once again, why is there, why could you, like, just take the, 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 the word bubble, like, white background box and put it for the, yeah. these other and two? And an example on that page that you're showing right there He Man has his shield. This is another perfect example of what I mean. Could you not have made the inside part of the shield that we're seeing there? Because it's showing the inside. They're making it all pinkish red. It's like, okay, you're bleeding right into the background again. Could you have made it at least gray so it stood out? Why did you have to make yeah. this new color? Well, just, you yeah. know, I, I'm sure that their they're budgeting behind this was just very like, ah, the kids are going to buy it. Just throw it out there. Who, who gives a shit? Well, yeah, this this wasn't a great introduction for being uh, the first ever comic in the magazine. Right. They do get better, everyone. They definitely do. But, uh, I mean, hell, if somebody liked it, great. But I was like, yeah. this was my I least mean, favorite. I mean, it's like, one of those God. things that it is what it is. Like, I, yeah. I that, yeah. that would probably be something in the magazine I would also kind of flip through kind of quickly. Uh, here we have Shadow Mystery and Extra <laughs> Evil. I'm sorry, I had to say. Oh, to say oh yeah, you filled all this out, Joe. To work with. Joe, show us what you did in your book. Oh Christ! And that's going to be the beautiful thing about this because the you thing. you had all of these as a kid, right? And you still have them all. <laughs> so when we get to this, you can always show this to the camera so we can see exactly how how little Joe Yamato was when he was 14, okay, well, 14 years old laugh. trying to connect all the. Well, first, you liar! Well, that I think I did a good. Hold on, let me try to get it sideways. I think I connected the Wind Raider pretty well. You know, it wasn't too bad. But I had a problem. This is a mistake. It's not like I uh -huh. I was dyslexic or or just didn't know what I was doing. Oh, God, I don't want to show because I can show hear it. from everybody in the chat, including show fucking it. Grimbot. I'll just show you number one. And you no, can show all make of fun it, of me. Do not make fun <laughs> no, of me. No, lift up higher. Does that say lift it up higher, Joe? I can't see it on on the thing on here. Clamful. Oh, wait, wait. Clamful. Clamful. All right. Can you see it now? Yeah, clam. Okay, I screwed up, but I got everybody else <laughs> right. But when it came to Clamful, I accidentally put an M instead of a W. Oh, so what, what do you got <laughs> on? What do you got for the S there on Triclops? Because that looks like a scribbling I, I, S too. Well, my well, I had to make a super small. Well, I can't. Oh. Well, I had to make it a smaller S because I don't know what the hell I was trying to write. Can you see it or no? Yeah, I, I can see it. Oh, clamful. That's oh. awesome. It was uh, just, it was, yeah, it was a mis mistake on the W. <clears throat> clamful. But, uh, oh, but, yeah, yeah, Joe, hey, it's fine. You know, the magazine was probably upside down at the time that you were writing that in there. It's, that's it's, what could have happened. I just, it screwed up and piss off Spartamus. Spartamus said, the evil clamful. Clamful. <laughs> Joe needs to make a clamful custom. There you go. <laughs> Oh God, I'm a moron. Hey, we're kids. We all make dumb mistakes. Clamful. So yeah, you will be experiencing the ones that I did write in. I don't know if I wrote in every one because some I didn't want to touch. But yeah, that one I, uh, dear God, it, it's kind all of. Right. Um, I'll let you get. The well, uh, when you go to the bottom, because the bottom, uh, uh, for number five, when you combine all that together, you're supposed to figure out who it is, and it's Whiplash, correct? From what yes. I saw on the answers, so at least I didn't. At least I didn't say I would, like yeah. you know like. 
Mm -hmm. Well, in my head, when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, like, are we supposed to go in order with the letters that you filled in? And that's going to... No! Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, that's kind of... It makes you think a little bit, but, uh, I mean, it's no clam Yeah, you always have to... Yeah, yeah, it's in a clam full or hmm, mip lash, but you would write it. I'd write down a separate piece of paper all the letters, and then you scramble them up. So, ah, damn it. He has a giant clam Picking for up. a hand. There we go. This is perfect. Yeah, thanks, you, thanks, Grandpa. You I got, appreciate hey, that. you got your next custom. You go ahead and make it. Do uh, do your your wheel for it. I'm sure people would love to have a one of a kind. Uh, Joey oh. Amato misprint in the first issue of the Master Universe magazine. Clamful. Huh? Well, you have to make Thank this you. happen. <sighs> Shut up. All right. <laughs> so, so, uh, go ahead. On the on the next page, I thought this was. Uh, we won't talk about Captain Polaris and the Star Challenge and all that stuff. What's interesting to me is grit. Make five, ten, even fifty dollars each week, and here's how. Sell Grit, America's family newspaper, will send you free sales kits and instructions on how to build your business. There's no risk to you because you pay only for the papers you sell. Each copy of Grit sells for 65 cents, and you know what? You keep 25 cents, plus any tips as your profit. You'll send us 40 cents for each paper you sell. Free prizes, too! In addition to instant cash, you can earn valuable prizes. For each paper you sell, you earn prize points. Collect prize points and trade them in for your choice of over 200 prizes. It's that easy. To get your business started, simply call the toll-free number below and ask for Sally. <laughs> she'll yeah, get she'll you, pick up Sally. She'll get you started on your profitable grit business soon. Joe, did you do this? Did you ever no, attempt I didn't. any of this? Well, when I first heard about money, I got excited. I showed my mom and dad, and they said, no, Joe, that's a scam. And they had explained yeah. that to me because I didn't really understand what they're talking about. They said, no, don't do it. It's a scam. But when I was seeing 5 10 50 each week oh, as a kid, you know, yeah. I'm shaking because I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, God, that's money, money. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought I would have been rich. I like, I like too, how they also, like, again, in bold lettering with the number, ask for Sally. And for some reason, if you're in Pennsylvania, you got to call a different 1-800 number. So... <laughs> all right yeah yeah, yeah. so <laughs> yeah, sally's gonna answer the phone call for all these millions of kids that have been reading but, the magazine but what if sally I, I was gonna say what if sally wasn't there but i imagine that anybody that was answering the phone was sally it didn't matter who there's it was. a sally yeah. you have a guy with huh? a deep voice this is hey, sally sally huh? could be a guy's name too yeah anyway. it can they call me sal like, <laughs> right, okay uh, sorry about that sally. Yeah, there you go Danger in the Sky, which, uh, what was, because reading this is very short, I was kind of like, well, what was the point of this? This one, I don't know, maybe just to highlight a quick little artist and some story, because again, there wasn't much to this. This was basically telling a the quickest story in the world of, you know, Skeletor, the plot, and having Spisto trapped in this kind of magical net, power net, and then He-Man saving the day, and then they parachute down and it's over. And that was it. I was like, well, you know, what's funny, as quick as this was, I at least could look at that a kid, you know, as a kid and say, oh, it's He-Man, it's Fisto. And I thought it right. looked cool compared to the story that we seen earlier that hurt my eyes. So this was a two-page quick thing, but it was like, I still thought it was cool to look at. But, yeah, it was just a quick little fun little filler, I guess. Yeah, it's like Skeletor attacks him and then He-Man. And or Fisto's trapped in the web, He-Man's kind of like cuts it and then they turn it into a parachute. Yeah, and then make a good little thing about, you know... It's, uh, uh, you it's know a, what? what Sp- Sportimus said we should have just called that number, like, right now. Hmm. Well, let me see. That's tempting. Do, do you have a phone? I, 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 I got mean, got well, my, of course... I, I got my phone right here. Call it! <laughs> Call for Sally! I'm going to see it say, it's Sally there! Oh, good, Sportimus! I love it! Oh, Nathan, this is going to be fucking fun! Right. Call it right now! All right. uh, Put it on speakerphone yes, or whatever yep, they call yep. it. I will do that, and I'm not in Pennsylvania, so I'm going to have to call this other number. What if it turns out to be like a like a sex hotline or something now? How great would it be though if they answered Sally? <laughs> you know, it's just a hot woman. One eight hundred two three three eight four five five. All right, I, I want to go ahead and show this. Actually, let me let me backtrack this back to that that page, so we're we're good. Well, this is gonna be a nice porn All right, call. So All this gonna be there. We go. It's gonna get uh, good. We got the number there. Calling now. Okay. Thank you for calling. Our offices are now closed. Please call back during normal business hours. Oh man. God damn it. The offices oh, are closed. 
Oh, I wish they were going to say something like, leave a message. Like, yeah, I'm calling for a second. Yeah, wave yeah. Oh, I, oh, it would have been awesome. <laughs> That's what we get for doing the show so late. It... I want to make 5, 10, even $50. Whatever you guys. Yeah, that would have, oh, how perfect would that have been if it would have just been like something else? I'm just like, yeah, is Sally there? I needed to talk to Sally. Uh, she said she said something about earning five to ten, maybe even fifty dollars a week. Um, selling papers. What, what can you do for me? Is there I, any I way? Wanna, and then I'd be like, "What do you guys got for prizes?" Because it wasn't listed here. You said you got two hundred. I oh, shit. Nathan, call it. I was gonna say, call him tomorrow and just make this a separate little video. And if you get a Sally, just upload it to the fucking page or something. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you gotta call her this week. You gotta call and try to get Sally. And say, I got everything over here. <laughs> you guys gonna send me the papers? What are the prizes you guys give them? <laughs> yeah. Can I? Are one of the prizes a Huffy a Huffy mountain bike? I would really like a Huffy mountain bike. Yes. God damn. Oh shit. I gotta stop. Okay, yeah, here's so, another uh, page. Oh, said there. use the reverse directory via Google to find out what the number really is. I guess you know what? We we could do that. Let me let me look that up. Or if someone else has already <laughs> looked it up for us, go ahead and let us know in the chat room now. How awesome would that have been if that would have worked though? What does that mean, a reverse directory? What does I don't even understand. Oh, uh, yeah, you can just Google the number and it'll kind of give you an idea. Like, uh, you can also go like if uh, a number calls you that you don't know, but it has the same area code, and you, like you can look it up on the white pages. You can do a reverse phone okay. look up on it. Uh, I'm trying to copy the number. There we go. Man, that would have been great. That would have been awesome. Oh, I wish it would have happened. That would have been awesome. Oh, could I have that live? But still, you're gonna have to try to call her uh, later in the week. Um, but uh, yeah, we have. While I'm doing this, we have hiding seekers here, so we're looking for evil warriors that are blending in with the background. There are some on the next page as well. But Joe, who are you? Are I'm already seeing evil Lynn and Skeletor, and it. it, it okay. I had Clawful circled, Cobra Khan circled, yeah. um, Skeletor circled. I always seen something that looked like a monkey, and I didn't know what the hell it was down in the bottom. I didn't know if that was part of it. And I seen web store circled, and Evelyn, and I think that's it. But look at the bottom left and back of Skeletor. It looks like a monkey. I'm like, what the hell is that? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right there at the bottom. Yeah, I never understood it. But these, just to let you know, these hide and seek and find the hidden picture stuff – always my favorite and everything like in those highlight magazines either find something or what's the difference with this page and that page this is the stuff as a kid i just gravitated to quickly were these so but they gave the answer let me see it says the answers are on page 20 let me go to page 20 and it said there were oh yeah they sh well they showed everything circled but they never showed that monkey i don't know why that monkey was there i, I never understood that monkey probably just to throw y'all i don't get there be the yeah, I don't get it. The next page where you can you can kind of see clawful because on the on the first page you can't really and whiplash tell. in the tree. Did you yeah. did you do the the trick vision, Joe? No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. I didn't take a piece of paper and ever try what the hell he was talking about. I did not do that. So in any of the magazines where if there was something where you actually had to do it to the magazine, I never liked you know. Wait, one I might have where I bent the page to find something with a hidden moss man that you I know, should have done. I would have, but, uh, I would have just waited to get like a, a empty toilet paper roll or something, paper towel yep. roll. Never did it. Yeah, yeah, probably should have. Yeah, but so. then the next page you'll see is all the answers to everything and a fun little puzzle thing where it's the word searches. Yeah, or not, not word search. Is that what you call it? What do you call it? Where you're, you know, crossword puzzle. That's it. Crossword yeah. puzzle. Not a word. <laughs> What is that? But, uh, what is puzzle? that thing again? And it, it, it's kind of shitty though that like they put the planetary puzzler right here, but then have the answer thing immediately underneath it. They should have just put that on a page prior. I kind of don't like that having that be right there. But go ahead and show off what you you wrote in there, Joe. Because I, I didn't. You, this one I actually oh, didn't really. Nope. Uh, there's some things I didn't like. Hold on, I want to knock over everything. That one's empty. Oh. I did not fill that out. Some of the things I did not like touching. I don't know why. It's weird. I ruined everything else, but not that. And then, of course, the last page is just the fun club sweepstakes. Yeah. Enter for Willy Wonka. And that I used to get excited for because I loved the movie. And I thought, oh, man, am I going to win everything? And then, of course, their back cover. But uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, th those were those were the prizes. You could win uh, a Watchmen TV, 
a Schwinn BMX bike or a hundred and fifty dollar cash toy shopping spree. That that's kind of good. And I guess the good thing about this is it's Willy Wonka, so you're going into it. At least this seems like a legit sweepstakes contest kind of thing, and not just a scam like the calling Sally and selling papers for grit. True, but wait, wait a second. What the hell? Grimbot said I missed. Too bad. No, I got Whiplash. I got Evil Lynn. I got Cobra Con Clawful. I got Skeletor. I got Web Store. What the hell was too bad on May, this? Maybe Is he, he messing with me? Uh, either that or he's thinking that Web Store looks like. Because I was kind of thinking the same thing. Like, oh, right there okay. to the left of He Man. That kind of looks like half of Too Bad. Uh, okay, well, uh, yeah, above. Skeletor is Web Store. That's Web Store. So yeah. in the bushes, if that's what he means. Okay, no, that's that's Web Store. They even give you the answers. I think. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. The answers are Web Store, Skeletor, Evilin, Whiplash, Cobra Con, Clawful, and then that weird little monkey thing that they never explained. But no, it wasn't too bad. That was a uh, Clawful. I mean, it was Web Store because you can see his grappling hook. If you look. Um, but you see you where he's coming. His... You see where he's coming from with that, though, right? It does kind of look like half a two bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what he means. <laughs> sort of has said one bad, but uh, that was that magazine. So we'll every well, once well, in a while jo- we'll pick well, one of these. And... Joe, hang on. I want to show him the last page with the Hot Wheels Railroad Freight oh. Yard. The, oh, yeah, I, I never. Uh, I was never much into any of these, like any any of the Matchbox stuff or like any no. any, any of the car playset kind of things. Like, oh, it's a garage. I I'm just... like. No, all right. Why? I'll admit, besides He-Man, I remember I collected Matchbox cars. I never did like these big sets like this, and I remember racing them down the driveway or racing them in the house. I was obsessed with those little teeny uh, Matchbox cars, but never this big stuff. But oh, uh, man. well, that was that, that was fun. Amazing. That and was fun. That was. And we'll we'll do them all. We're gonna get to them all and experience and do it all with you guys. Now, now it's time for the questions. So, anything you have for us, comic cartoons or anything in general, pop culture, whatever you want, hit us now but right now grimbond i don't know what he means he says joe you believe people behind cougar story um i um what i didn't know what that meant do you know what he might mean is he uh, was he referring to that guy who talked about saving his brother from a oh uh, uh, I, jaguar? I, I think that's what he's kind of getting at so yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh there oh okay no he's a little liar a little right. liar well, while, while you guys are formulating questions in the chat i will read some of the comments we got on last week's video a serial girl or girl there's no i in there imp is the most adorable evil bat pig demon thing in the universe agreed he's yeah. a cute little suck that is very resourceful and very important. But but too. kinda kind of annoying too. Like I, I think if I was a part of the horde, I'd be like, Man, imp, oh, one day, one day I'm just gonna I'll be able to get you alone and tear your head off for all that you've done to me, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh there let's, you go. let's see. Uh Drawing by Hand says, Cheers for the shout out, Nathan. Great layout with Tyler's picture in the background. Well, we had to keep him there in, in spirit last week. I, I would have done it this week, but the way I laid out the magazine it just made more sense that way. Uh, I used to watch He-Man, She-Ra not as much, but I used to get crap from school around seven, eight years of age. Filmation's great, and amazing artwork all around. Have all the Motu books by, by Dark Horse, and learned a lot from you guys on Fans of Power. Joe does need to do more customs. The imp customs are great. So many different versions. Joe needs to make more Filmation characters. Do need to, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, make a leech design. And Sleeper okay. Awaken. Yeah, uh, so great chat. Okay. So we appreciate that. Okay. Blue haired lawyer. A few things. He had three things here. Number one, I used to work with this guy that was in his mid twenties, and he once told me that he felt sorry for me because I grew up in the eighties. According to him, I missed out on so much. I just looked at him in disbelief and didn't bother trying to correct him, as he was a know it. What? Yeah, I yeah I. I don't know why. You Wait, still... he's saying that missed out because he grew up in the eighties. I I don't is know he... if this was like. Uh in his mid 20s. So maybe maybe this maybe like this is a younger guy too, blue-haired lawyer. It's like I feel bad like how would he or maybe he would have been older at the time? I don't know cuz either way none of that really makes sense. That guy that, yeah, yeah, that, that guy's a dick bag. Anyway, number 2. Yeah. <laughs> and I I think blue-haired lawyer had asked us this before. I have a very small classics collection because they are pretty pricey. Do any of you uh, ever buy loose figures from eBay to save money? 
or are you guys cherry pickers or completists? I'm not a completist. I prefer to get them loose because I, 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 it is kind of annoying to rip each of them. Like when I got some from Big Bad, tearing them all out of the box, having to clip the little uh, plastic things that they wrap around their legs and arms. It's just I so I prefer the the loose ones, and I'm just trying to get like characters well, I, that I really want. I mean, at one time when when I was collecting, yeah, I was a completist. The money, money issues came into it, and then I wasn't anymore. But well, no, they were always just yeah, I'd rip them right open, and uh, yeah, yeah. With the way that Maddie Collector was set up, it 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 was kind of hard to keep up with it. I remember Tyler telling me he's like, man, like I don't want to just pay this for like this and get this character that I don't really want. But you're you're subscribed to it. You're kind of stuck in there. I wish I would have been smart enough to have jumped on when it started and just collected them all regardless. And number three, although I'm not really a She-Ra fan, I really do like the idea that She-Ra and her crew were a group of rebels fighting against a tyrant who had taken over everything. I honestly never knew that until a few years ago. Maybe I'll buy an Octavia oh, wow. Octavia figure someday because I think her design and colors are great. And it's a great figure, and I want to stress to you now, when you get it in, if you want to put the tentacles in the, the back to display that way, pop her head off and go ahead and put those in first and then put her head back on. Otherwise you're just asking for it to be a, a huge pain in the ass. She does take up. <laughs> she quite, is a great figure. She is, but she also takes up quite a bit of space. So the way I have her here, I've had to kind Which, of adjust and like scoot other characters a little bit in front of her so I can display her how yep, I want. So that's yeah. what I had to do. She had to kind of go in the back with her tentacles and they yeah. would like, kind of like be in front of the side of the tentacles. And it's yep. a shame they never had Octavia back then, but they didn't make any of the scary characters for the princess of power. Which, line, so that's so just, that just blows my mind. Um, Stephen Brick, AFOL. I always enjoyed the comic relief sidekick characters like Orko, Imp, Broom, Cal, etc. Joe, your Imp custom collection of Imp forms is great. I like some more than others, <laughs> I but I really wish Mattel or Super 7 would release like a four or five pack of these Imps in his different yeah. forms. As far And then he went to tell me about, as far as the unofficial guide goes, I checked. I got a second print version too, so it probably went through at least one reprint. It was a fun show as always, guys. Appreciate you. Checking it out every week. Have uh, let's see. I got a couple more things here. You got anything in the chat? Um, just <laughs> Grim keeps saying he's like them saying it's web store, not too bad. And he just made a face. I'll get him a good scan because you can see the grappling hook, but he'll see it is web store when you get a, a better look of it. Uh, he'll see, but I can see what he means. I do understand it could look like a, a too bad into you know some degree. I do understand that. Uh, Sportimus says, so, uh, about that collection videos, I think from the both of us, cause we did kind of say like a while back, Hey, yeah, we'll do that and upload it to the channel. I just have to do a little straightening. I promise Sportimus, I will get to that. Nathan will too. We'll do he, it one time. I'll just pop up, stand up live and walk around. The he, he's room. got, Joe, well, you know, Joe's got to get all those hookers that he has held captive in his house, like out of certain rooms <laughs> and move them somewhere else. Can't show this, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let me look up at the ceiling again. I'm like, shut up, shut the fuck up, and then I put the thing back. Down. Yeah, <laughs> you imagine. Okay, um, Curtis Ackerman said, <laughs> "Now that you finished the comic review, you think you guys could review Golden Discs of Knowledge next week? Well, next week I already have that planned of what we got. That I think for a couple weeks we got some things coming up, but we are going to get to a we whole to uh, commentary for that. We will, Curtis. Don't you worry." Um, Adam Gabbert said, Joe and Nathan, what other reading material do you like that is not Masters of the Universe related? Mm. Um, well, I always, oh God, I'm going to sound like I'm just a moron. I used to love reading the video game magazines. Yeah, uh, I used to read, yeah, and I would read Fangoria, but as for now, there's, I, uh, God, I don't, I don't have any reading material to hold. That's why I get so excited hearing about a comic and the potential that, oh, this would be awesome. And when it sucks, that's why I'm let down. I want to have a great He-Man comic to read or anything to read. But, uh, yeah, pretty much, God, just uh, what horror stuff and video games and this. That's it. Yeah, uh, I'm with Joe on the video game magazines. As far as, like, I I'm not one of those leisurely readers. It's not like I have a book, like at my bed so when i like i go sit in bed and read a little bit and then go to sleep i'm i've never been that kind of person um <laughs> for a while i had like this movie trivia book that i like just kept sitting on the toilet so anytime i went and took a dump i would just like 
I've read, never read been that book. person. I know there's people that like taking the magazines or the newspaper, like album yeah. of the toilet. I don't like taking nothing with me. I just want to go to the bathroom and get out. I feel like I don't want to have stuff getting dirty, funky, and smelly. I feel uncomfortable. So every time I hear somebody say, I'm going to take a magazine well, and I, shit her. Like, I, know, I know. I think it's like it's, it's like a good way to take your mind off of the process of taking a shit. You know? <laughs> Oh my god! There's people out here it, that even it, would it, take it, like, like their computers and devices. I was like, no, I take no. nothing. I, I mean, you know, there've been times I've taken my my phone in there to like read Twitter or something like that. But I don't know. There, there's something oh, comforting, I just, but I think it just like you know. No, I can I can understand. I just when it's the bathroom for me, that's just bathroom time. I just want to be left alone, do what I do, and then get the hell out of there. And then yeah, then I go do stuff. But I've never been a taking a magazine, newspaper. <laughs> tablets but for people that do it hey what the hell so i wouldn't want to borrow they're like hey you want to look at the newspaper now no no i'm not gonna touch that uh, I, Shit, I, I, I think i think it's i think it's relaxing honestly uh jsp do a black light on your phone and you're gonna have all oh, this no, like hey, shit no, to bring no, no, no no i like sir i clorox wipe my phone more than i feel like most people do um I, I've kind of skipped a few, so I, just to address it real quick, JSP, did you guys get the link? I messaged you about the documentary In Search of Darkness. Yes, I did. I, I, I was lazy, though, and I still haven't purchased it. But I, what you were saying is it It seems like there's not like a whole lot of stuff that I would cling to. It's just a lot of talking head. Oh, hey, this came out. Hey, this came out, and they're just sort of... I kind of like more than formative stuff. If it, it and I, this happens a lot with wrestling documentaries for me. If I watch them, I'm like, all right, well, I already knew this, this, and this, I, and I get that it's to reach like that casual audience kind of thing. But when I when I watch a documentary about something that I'm really into, I kind of want something else that's there that I'd be like, oh, I didn't know that. So I walk away from it feeling, uh, I I don't really know where I was going with that. Just more informed about the the thing that i already liked it's like the andre the giant documentary that hbo did when it finished i was like it was good but i already knew all that stuff and some of the stuff that the wwe network puts on i'm like yeah all right uh, yep i already knew all that but the the things like never sleep again or crystal lake memories the detail it goes in you have the people that were involved in the project they're talking about their time on it so you find out i like that you find out yeah, like little a lot nuggets of along the way that build and build and you're just like yeah that's that's really awesome so that's what i always look for yeah like for friday the 13th the final chapter just the thought of you know they had footage of like that other alternate ending with you know their mother but i always wish it's like damn but there's no audio that exists and to know that kane hotter has a lot of footage of stuff that was yeah. too graphic for the you know new blood and i was like oh my god that would have made it awesome and if they could have cleaned it up and added it into the movie so i love seeing things i never knew about and you know that whole different look of jason from part three when it was stan winston before that got changed with his design of how freaky it was and they have that one image where it looks like he's ready to decapitate you know decapitate her head in a dream sequence it's like yeah i, I eat that stuff up too yeah i love that yeah it, it, but but you don't get a, a lot of it's just like fluffy stuff that it's it's basically there for the person that just knows nothing <laughs> just a very very oh yeah i jason's one with the 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 knives for fingers right it's for like that kind of oh i like, do no, you that's... i cannot tell you how pissed i get when people don't know the difference between jason and michael myers and that used to happen so much I'm like how can you confuse them two i even remember one time dressing up as michael and it was for halloween and it was like scaring some of the kids in the neighborhood and i was even sitting there like a dummy then i'd move and some of the kids were coming they said mom is that chucky <laughs> i'm I gonna say what even to the little kids that wanted to choke them like how does michael myers look like chucky little fuckers all right um hey um let's see grimbot said make biff beastman yeah i could do that grim i might do that sometime clam too. Um, full. Clam, says, full. clam full clam <laughs> full clam full oh my god shut up now i'm gonna have to probably happen. make a character with like a clam head and shit uh Ooh. sportimus says what are your what are your guesses as to what will be revealed at this year's PowerCon online what do you hope to see well i i'm gonna sound completely ignorant and stupid again i didn't know that like how it's continuing. I didn't even know that PowerCon was still I, happening and what the capacity, what's going on with that, Nathan? Uh, well, I, I didn't look into much of any of it myself, but I figure if they're following the same line of other things, that they're they're going to put together a little thing that's just going to be online-based. It's sort of like how we're doing okay. the show and having like live viewers. It would be a similar thing. I, I Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me to 
uh, maybe they get Kevin Smith to pop in, and maybe they show a tidbit, like, like something, a little tidbit of animation. Or, yeah, I would love teaser. a little bit of what Revel. Yeah, yep, a little, a little teaser little... revelation. Obviously, show us some more for the origins figures of what's going on. Maybe some details of like stores when they'd be hitting them, price points, other things. You know, just a little more descriptive on that. Because I know they showed one thing. I think with Adam with the sky sled or something. I think they showed that a couple weeks ago or something. I like I said, I, I was just out of the loop for a while because when I thought nothing was happening, I just kind of wasn't looking. As I was like, oh, this isn't going to happen. But if they're doing stuff online, it's great. But yeah, I'd like to see at least one bit of art. I know we're not going to get animation, but something to give us a taste of revelation, an idea, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I, that's what, either that or if they even went in the other direction and showed us something from that other show that was announced. I think it, I think it would be nice to just see something in action so we can kind of get an idea about the yeah. look and, and feel of everything. Um, Descendants Man. of Grayskull had a couple things here. Saturday mornings were so cool back in the day. They were family days because my parents liked the presenters of the shows, and I loved the cartoons they showed during them. Going live on the BBC and Swap Shop, where kids could swap their toys across the UK, on ITV, it was number 73, Motormouth, then ended in the 90s with the Ant and Dex. It looks like an abbreviation for December, but I'm just going to say Dex. Saturday show. Such fond memories. Plus the the hiring videos, et cetera, truly was simpler times. And he also yes. said, he or she, I don't, I, I don't know the gender of Descendants of Grey Skull. Imp was a cool character, although loved the moment when Cal splattered him in goose fruit. He clearly hated Skeletor in the episode of Shadows and Skulls, proving his divine loyalty to Hordak. The rest of the Horde would jump ship or grab a chance to get rid of Hordak, which is another reason why they hate Imp. <laughs> yes, they do. And yes, he has great knowledge of the filmation cartoons. So thank you, the Descendants of Grayskull. All right, so Descendants um, of Grayskull is is, is a, a a male. Yes. yes. Right on. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and I think I said uh, sometimes you never. Mind it, but I won't. Yeah, I won't say it just in case. Yeah. I'll ask him next time. But I think I said his name before. I don't, I don't think he minds. But right. uh, okay. Um. Let's see. Uh, Mike Champ said, my newest question is, do you guys feel that the Meteor Orbs are accessories or creature characters like Battle Cat and Zoar? Oh, they're, they're creature characters. I mean, yeah. they are creatures. And, and like I said, Comet Roid and Gorilla, you know, I mean, they stand up. But, I mean, you know, they're not in... They're the ones that are on two feet compared to all the rest that are, like, on four. But no, that's what I meant. If they were ever to come into classics, they could probably make them the size of at least Cringer. I wouldn't expect every Meteor to be yeah. a Battle Cat size well, one because that would be ridiculous. And I, I but, think in terms of toy form, the Meteorbs would make sense to be accessories to other characters, if that makes sense. Just to pack them in with somebody well, else. Well, it could, but... Yeah, I mean, we'll remember like how, you know, Cringer was a pack in, but I mean, cr it could be a Cringer size with somebody, or they could just do two packs of like, you know, like one against the other Gorilla, Comet Roid. Now, those would be the only ones that would be the size of a figure because they're standing up. I figure, okay, they could do something clever with using accessories, snap on stuff to make it like even like, let's say, the Meteor of itself. You know, if they wanted to just do a shell to where it looked like Comet Roid and Gorilla in Meteor form because they weren't going to do transformation gimmicks, remember, for classics, but then you could pop that off pop it onto a body and then there'd be parts to where like gorilla it could be maybe the base body of a beast man comet roid could have been something to where it have been some of the characters that have more robotic features even if they wanted to do something with roboto's legs repaint but they could have been like that but yeah as for the meteors in just their you know animalistic form Again, it could have had popped in legs that you popped in and head and tail. Pop them out and then show them as just the meteor. There could have been so many things that could have worked for it, but it didn't happen. But yes, to answer your question, definitely creatures. Um, Zentron has a question that yeah, this is a no-brainer. Would you guys like a compilation book of our UK He-Man and She-Ra comics? Oh, dear God. Yes. yes. Yeah, if Dark Horse was to release that, holy, that would be, that would be multiple volumes, though, because those are a lot of stories i mean I, a I, lot of stories <laughs> i think if there's any opportunity to take any of this media that hasn't already been put into a compilation find a way to to make that happen that way everything is together in an affordable way that people can just purchase it and have everything together. that's that's the beauty of the mini comics collection like i don't have to worry about digging out or tracking down 
if I wanted, like they're they're all here in physical form, so I can just flip through the book and read it. So yes, absolutely. Yes, and I know there was a lot of things I probably missed, but it's almost wrap up time because there is something I have to do about this time. But I think we got pretty much here. But if we missed anything, of course, I always say I apologize. But this was a it was a fun episode. Like I said, I really enjoyed reading that uh, magazine live. That was a great great idea from Nathan. He I said I, that, and he was like, I was like, I hope, I hope sally picks up one day oh it's gonna be a follow-up you have to do that this week maybe tuesday (laughs) call sally see what's going on put that video up on here on fans of power because i want to see that too that would be great ask her every question about that i want to see if these people like what the fuck are you talking about who and you describe oh yeah great money five ten fifty i'm hoping to make fifty dollars send me as many as those as you can i i saw your advertisement in the master universe magazine they're like what right oh uh, shoot but it was fun so guys i just want to thank every one of you that was here in the chat room we always love having you and you know being a part of the show and if there's anybody new to this channel please make sure you like subscribe share and ring that bell so you can always get notified when we go live we're almost at 500 so we appreciate it we love you guys and until next time have a powerful day before i get into my trivia question of the week i want to encourage mm-hmm. because joe never says it check out all the links mm-hmm. we got down below go to fansbower.com that'll take you to our hub page on pop culture network download us on anchor download us on podbean download joe's mask download tyler's leech mini comic hit joe up for a custom buy one of his t-shirts and for my trivia for the week joe are are you familiar with the undertaker versus undertaker match from SummerSlam 1994 well kind of familiar and if i can say one quick thing about that yes i remember when that Undertaker, remember when the other Undertaker went away and this one was there and he would kind of have his head up and down real quick and you'd barely see his face, you know, all leading up to it. I remember it was one of my sister's friends out of all people saying, that's not the Undertaker. I said, no, I said, that's the Undertaker. I was like, I don't know why he's doing this weird hair flipping. And she said, that just doesn't look like him. And then sure enough, it led to the whole thing where there was another Undertaker. I was like, oh my God, how could somebody know something that I wouldn't have known, especially somebody that's not even a fan of wrestling. But she looked at it and obviously, you know, she knew a little bit, but Boy, that pissed me off that somebody kind of won up to me back then. So. Well, well, my question, but yeah, slightly my, familiar. My question for that is: Do you know the wrestler that portrayed that fake Undertaker? Huh? No, I know he was a little shorter, though, right? Wasn't he yeah. just like a little shorter? Just I remember a little with a face bit off. shorter. Hmm. No, who was that? That was a Brian Lee. He kind of toiled around in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Did that angle, kind of went back, did ECW for a little bit, returned to the WWF later. Do you remember the Disciples of Apocalypse, the DOA? Yeah. He yeah. Was, he was Chains in that group. Now I have to go Google up to look to see Chains again because that was a. Uh, yeah, because didn't the. Uh, wasn't Crush in that too? Yep. The Disciple? Yeah, Disciples it was, it, it was okay. Crush, Chains, Eight Ball, and Skull. And uh, okay. Crush hmm. left. At one point to go to WCW, remember he became Brian Adams and just mm, immediately yeah. became part of the NWO and the DOA kind of kept going a little bit. And Eight Ball and Chains, it's the Harris Brothers that also went. Oh, back. JSP knows all this stuff he just posted. I mean, every time you do a wrestling thing, JSP gets it. I mean, he always gets that son of a gun, that question, but uh, yeah. damn. Yeah, you guys know the history of that a lot more. I just remember the characters, but I never went in depth about it. Well, the, I the, go in depth about Friday Thirteenth, though. The thing that I hate is like I always forget when Tyler's not on. I do wrestling trivia with you, so about three quarters of the way through the show, I was like, if you see me just kind of spacing out for a second, I'm like, all right, I got to think of something to ask Joe for trivia. And I'm like, all right, fake fake Undertaker, and I'm like, all right, that's what I'll go with. So, well, you go. get me. Like I said, I, I screwed up on one little thing or one time where Tyler, I think, was doing Friday the 13th uh, trivia, and he did a quote from Shelly, and it just, mm. sometimes there's some quotes from I, just I the, think, uh, I think people. I was like, mm, I don't. Unless it's something, like, super obvious, movie quotes are really, really hard. Because it, it could sound like anything, <laughs> you know? Like... A, yes, a, I mean, some are hard. Some, I mean, you can, you definitely get, but some it could be random, and especially if I'm such a big, fan, you know, fan of Friday the Thirteenth, you think I would know even any of their dialogue? I should, but because I'm normally good, you ask me normal questions about it, I'm always going to pick up something when it comes to Friday the Thirteenth. But yeah, I'll miss some. But uh, that was good. So uh, all right, guys, we'll see you next time. Be kind to one another. Be nice. It's free to be nice to other people.
Doesn't cost you nothing. Be nice. Stay safe. See you next week.